I want Monsanto's point of view, but they refused to be filmed. And then I discovered two journalists who did talk to Monsanto, and it changed their lives. We picked a story that happened to be uh, a pretty hot topic, I guess, because it got us in hot water. But it was a story about Monsanto's product, bovine growth hormone, and how it is injected into dairy cows in the United States. And um, we were working for the Fox television station in Florida at the time as the investigative reporters and found that it was used quite liberally in Florida and that it changes the milk and that the FDA has not tested it thoroughly and a variety of other aspects to the story that made it a really good story, an important story to tell. But unfortunately, Monsanto felt equally strong that it was a story they didn't want out. Monsanto had made it clear that they were uh, likely to litigate the issue if we uh, went ahead with the story. There were threats of dire consequences. And Fox, who had promoted the story, suddenly decided to backtrack and uh, started criticizing us and started tearing the story about uh, apart. And uh, to make a long story short, eight months later and 83 rewrites later, they fired us. As one of their lawyers said to us, look, it doesn't matter whether the facts are true. It doesn't matter that you have the facts well documented. It just isn't worth, from a business decision, it just isn't worth a couple of hundred thousand dollars to go up against Monsanto in a court of law to defend the truth. Well, you know, that didn't used to be the standard for good journalism, is what does it cost to defend the truth? The standard used to be, is it the truth? And is it important for people to know? The story Steve and Jane tell me about BGH milk is frightening. Their censored evidence documented risks of breast and colon cancer from drinking it. It cried for further testing, but none was ever done. This is the first genetically modified product to be used and fed to the public at large. The stakes went far beyond how much money they invested in research and development. If this had flopped, if this had been ruled unsafe, if this had been ruled to be accepted before it was generally found to be safe, it would raise questions about the entire range of genetically engineered foods that they had in the pipeline. So they had a huge stake in getting this approved, very quietly getting it into the food supply, and trying to convince everybody that it's safe. I'm amazed when Steve tells me that the United States is the only major industrialized country in the world that approves the consumption of BGH. It seems to me that if there's nothing wrong with the genetically modified products, why not label them? Why not tell people this contains genetic... Well, they have such a... They pitch a fit when anybody suggests they should label the products like milk. Why not label milk that's coming from cows injected with artificial hormones? They don't do that because they know that people would not buy it. It's not up to giant corporations to dictate to people what they put in their own bodies. If I don't want to eat a genetically engineered tomato, that's my choice. And maybe it's for a good reason, and maybe I'm just ignorant, and I ought not to be opposed to it. But, you know, it's my body. It's my choice.